<laughs> look. <laughs> so when you look at it, how do you spell it again? E M E M A R U. It's like Amara, but it, instead of it being starting with the A, it's with the E. Right. Right. Yeah. Because remember, the E flipped the M. You got another M A R U. A R means fire. Remember mm -hmm. the U. The U is the C on its side off the crip flip. Right. But C means C S E E when you looking with the eyes. Say that one more time for the people, real quick. <laughs> <laughs> the letter C means S E E when you see with the eyes on the flip. Now watch the flip. The two M's we already flipped three M's on the last callers. We was at we was at Michigan, Minnesota, and Mississippi. Mm -hmm. Right now we got Maine and Missouri. We went from a three M flip to a five M flip, out the Midwest to the far west. On a cultural flip, on a name knock, off of a hair flip, off of two streaks. A red and a blue. Okay. Right? Because you got two streaks in your hair. You got a red streak and a blue streak. Mm -hmm. That's called a hair flip. Currently, your hair look like they in cornrows. Yeah. I have locks, but they're, yeah, I got them braided. Yeah. Right. So the, the now you look, the locks is in the corn roll. The corn is the, is the festive ceremony of the first harvest. Okay. Right. So in the middle of the summer, when they barbecue, we used to have corn festivals. This is a Southwest phenomenon that they practice. And now they just make different meals of salsa, different types of salsa with corn. In yeah. It. And and that's that's crazy that you said that, because um, I, I'll eat I'll eat salsa with the tortilla. Chip. I was looking at the color synchronization because um, I remember I told you. Um, in my D, uh, I messaged you and I told you that blue and yellow is like uh, the most consistent uh, colorway pattern. And so mm -hmm. one of the first things um, how it came to me in this in this lifetime was because, um, like I said before, um, I'm I have family from the west side and the south side, but mainly from the south side and moved to the west. Mm -hmm. So my um, great grandpa, my grandpa Roscoe, had moved to uh, Berkeley. And so that's um, why I added the Cal Bears and stuff because he put us on to Cal uh, to Cal Berkeley. Right. So um, okay, now let's let's finish with your name. So the two M's represent two states: one red, red one blue; one Democrat, one Republic. Mm -hmm. Right, and in these two states are each one wing of a single bird. Just so happened this single bird can only be the bald eagle because that's the bird of the nation, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now pay attention. Okay, so from, from the two states, Maine and Missouri, we got uh, the uh, black states in the middle, right? When do the states be black? You said when, when are the states black? Yeah, in the voting polls. Uh, uh, um, Th those are the votes they don't count. Oh, okay. Right. So the rest of the states' votes not counted. Only the two states matter, red and one blue. Okay. Okay. Now, now in Chicago, forty-four red is Chief Malik Angel Bay. The bishop flipped from the uh, Midwest to the far west. Name was T. Rogers. Rogers becomes the bishop on the square. Red House, aid and assist the righteous brother in the righteous endeavor to reorganize the Red House for the aid and assistance of Big Tookie. Okay. Okay. So, so T, T. Rogers come to inform the Red House that in the Midwest, we see the same enemy, but we don't see him the same way. Let me show you what we see while you adapt your culture to adjust to the war. Okay. okay. Now, when they take Big Tookie out of the, out of the circulation, <clears throat> then they can start trying to put wedges between the youth. Right? So, you got P-Stone uh, Bloods now. Mm -hmm. right? right? So, 44 Red 
Angel Bay, 44 Blue is Big Tookie, right? Tookie is the crooked man, right? King Blue. P Stone, the rook, right? That's Angel Bay, the lawman. And the spokesman is Larry Hoover. Right. The, Free him. The chief, the chief between the two. Right, because we always have to have a witness when we put in work. And the witness to Larry is Angel Bay, and the witness to Angel Bay is Larry. Right. Right. right? And the witness to Tukey got killed, Raymond Washington. But he got his angel wings. Now we knock him from New York off of an El Hajj Malik El Shabazz or a Malcolm X flip on chickens coming home to roost to make sure that all clans across the land is involved. Now that's the fire in the middle. Right. Right. And the end, the C that you see is a C red, but it's all surrounded by blue. Right. Right. And that's the bloods between the Crips and the G's rocking with the P stones. Cause they got to back up the law man to restore the law on the land. So, when Farrakhan come out and say that y'all gangbangers need to stop gangbanging because y'all are going to be the army of the righteous, how in the fuck is that possible? Well, the enemy was training them in boot camp. Big Mama was tra training us in the concrete jungle. Right? Only the strong survive. Right. Right? And so we came up and found strategies around it all. Okay, okay this is what brings us back to the name, Amaru, which flipped Tupac on your shirt, that's tops, but the dragon is on your shorts, that's bottoms. T-shirts and blue jeans, tops and bottoms, red and blue. Right? So when we flip the two, Tupac then rise as the dragon. Holy shit, that nigga say he coming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. And that's how we all, all oh, right. man. Don't you know that's going to look when he if he pop out man, right now, man, that would shock the fuck out the world, man. I, I feel like I'm heating up like I'm, I'm my bad. I'm, I'm, I'm just overwhelmed with happiness because it's like I'm it's like when I'm not when I'm not like listening. Well, I mean, I'm always listening to you. I'm like, I'm a I'm an avid student of Rod Hayes, <laughs> but it, it, it's, it's just I just got to say it, it's. Uh, <laughs> I'm so happy to hear this because it's like I'm. It's like you I'm just, just put it in your yeah. bones. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But continue, my bad. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. So we we well we we actually flipping code, translating it in real time for people to see it. Right. Right. And you got a lot of people that they can't flip code in real time. They gotta go write that shit down and try to work out the problem, like you're doing the math problem. But I know what all this shit means so good because I know my people. Right. 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 So when I start seeing this shit, that's, that's what Chief's got to do. I, I am. Um, it's crazy because, um, not to be off subject, but it's connecting with what you're saying. Um, I'm like, my grandma's the oldest, my uncle's the oldest, and it's like I'm, uh, I'm like a, a just about like a mirror of my uncle. Like he's a he's a barber, but like he's he's you know how barbers are. Barbers are like your your natural um psychologist or, or like a, a psychologist pretty much. And people come to him, it's literally like looking yeah. looking into my, a mirror. And so my, like, my brother a barber. He got oh, a barbershop in the basement right here. Okay. <laughs> now my mom is a hairdresser, my daughter is a hairdresser. All this is relevant. Because we own a hair flip. Yeah. My mom is too. Okay, now. In our culture, this is a reminder for everybody listening. The hair place was always the place where we went and got the skinny on what's going on in the town. That explains the gossip and the talk when they and sit it, Every neighborhood had a barbershop where the men of the neighborhood congregated to groom and discuss the issues of the community. And that's exactly what, man. The mothers, one of these women in the church do hair at her house where everybody in the church come get their problem solved by a big mama. Why they got their hair done. 
some of the men were so uh, supportive of that, they built whole hair salons in their basement or on their back porch our- for their wife to do hair. Mm. Why she don't get a shot? It's not personal enough. It's too mechanical. Right. Which goes back to how they take the artists <clears throat> that's coming with the new product. It's the, all it is is the cookie cutter molded control they have, right? Now, the rapper has been telling that shit the whole time. And, and they responding to the rapping and tapping of the spirit knocking of the early 1900s, right? Because right? if you remember, when we first started rapping, we started off in school beating on the table, yeah. rapping and tapping, right? Now, Rapping has never new, been new to us. Yeah. Right? right? In early rock and roll, Chuck Berry got bars. Yeah, Muhammad Ali. and Yeah. Right. right. I'm talking about in a song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got one called Monkey Business. Mm. Friend trying to get me up a tree, going to try it. You can buy it. I can pay you next week. <laughs> Too much of monkey business. <laughs> Too much of monkey business. But he, 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 he rapping. Right. He ain't the only one. You can go into bluegrass country music, the the, the um, devil that going went down to Georgia. Mm-hmm. That's an old rap song. Rapping as an art form originated in New Orleans. It was a jive talk. Yeah, you, and that was everybody like- that used to go to New Orleans. You used to first go to Basin Street to get, get cleaned up for the nightlife on Bourbon Street. Right, you start off with the barber. He tell you who got the best cologne. If he don't got it, he tell you who got the best cuts of clothes. If you're from out of town, he tell you who you need to hook up with. They they help network people together. Right. Know, yeah. Now, when you get done going from one end of uh, Basin Street, you're gonna be totally jazzed out for the night. Right, you ready for you ready for the New Orleans night light, red light district or blue light district? It really don't matter, right? So they would go to each district in order to meet the needs of the people that, that fall on certain categories. So you know that if you ain't from the right category, you don't get caught in the red light district. You get caught in the blue light district. You good. Like you learn all that. So when you get done going down Basin Street, you had all of the rules of the local town. You know who not to fuck with. You know who you can fuck with. You know who you got to look of. Since you see so-and-so, you know, give an old lady something, right? They tell you who that big mama is, how they look out for, right? By the time you get there, now you're going down Bourbon Street for the nightlife. In the nightlife, you costumed out. Shit. This is... You know, at one point in time, it was Mardi Gras every goddamn Friday and Saturday night, mm-hmm. right? Because you come in from the fields, unwind on Friday, you go down Bourbon Street, you come back up, I mean, down Basin Street, come back up Bourbon Street. Now it's time to go get you a room and take a nap. Because you don't got church till Sunday, so you got Saturday to lollygag around town all day and hit motherfucking Bourbon Street again, get sloppy drunk, pissy drunk, whatever you're going to do, go on back to the room, then get up and go to church. <laughs> and, from there you go back to, and from there you go back to Big Mama House and do you. Right. <clears throat> so they don't wow. want the artists to come up with new art forms because it, they can't uh, mechanize it, right? If they want, they want every great guitar player to sound like Jimi Hendrix. Right. No, no, that's not how you be great. I think the great guitar player is the one who don't sound like nobody else but itself. Exactly. And that's what they were trying to tell me. They were all like, oh, you need to sound like I'm like, nah, bro. Because what's the point? And it's like the advice that they were giving me, I'm like, I know they, they were telling me that. Uh, they were giving me advice that didn't work, and I'm like, I already know your your artist your artists or whatever that you signed or whatever didn't even do that. So why why the fuck are you telling me the wrong advice? Mm. Like I'm mm-hmm. yeah, but it's it's like everything is so commercialized. 
guys. Like, I'm glad I didn't um, get but that's everything that I... But that's them being the Matrix agent, keeping your ego character that they helped you create in check. Yeah. So you don't... This, that's what they call it, breaking the mold. You heard that term? Yeah. That's what break, breaking the mold. Because the mold is the artificial construct. Break yeah. In the mode is when you step into your own self and do your own thing, you're going to break the mold. You don't fit into their little box. Now, though, now you get the consequence part of it. These motherfuckers don't like when you don't fit in their box. Yeah. They become violently, extremely belligerent to you sometimes for not fitting in the box that they created in their head or where you should fit. Right, and we gods. We don't have a box. They not gods until they can get out of that mindset. As long as they in that mindset, they not that they that's not a guy. Say, that's an NPC. That's a yeah. nine player character only sitting here to uh, put obstacles in your path. Yeah, don't exactly don't fall for that bullshit. Yeah, no, I was it, man, and and I'm glad that everything didn't happen so fast for me. Like and um with the whole. <laughs> Just thing for for why I said this is like a, a a wake up call for this is a cultural wake up call, like we can't we're 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 meant for royalty we're not meant to we're not we were never meant to be the face of struggle anyways like we we're ascending to a different to a different level. We believe but, in struggle. We believe struggle is ordained for the creation and development of the character of man. Yeah, yeah. We not we we not opposed to suffering or struggling. I should say, yeah. if the un necessary struggles right and it's like once you move to a different level the words that's the side effect of the blatant oppression that we are opposed to yeah because at that time our struggle then is no longer to provide for our families now our struggle is to overcome this juggernaut of a unconquerable force that's holding our people down and sucking our wealth yeah i don't want to hear about like all the negative like that that was a it was a time and place for that and it's all like now with the look, whole world changing right but it, it, it don't it don't look when we talking about something the problem the magnitude of what we're dealing with very very few people can break out of the mold to raise their thinking level to f solve those types of problems um, the way I see it, if we follow the pattern that nature gave us, follow the hierarchy of the children in the middle, women around the children, the men around the women, concentric circles to the middle, that's the old matriarchal way. Yeah. When the great Atlan, as they call it, Atlantis, was functioning, operational, they didn't have no motherfucking crane. Right. They didn't have sociopaths, psychopaths. That that's, shit was interjected into our reality from somewhere else. Because that's what I was saying. Under the matriarchy, it's, it's conditioning every child to create the life they want. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. 